Hey, welcome back everyone. Uh, thank you so much those of you that are following the current electricity series. Those that are doing the exercises and submitting their their answers for for marking you're doing something so wonderful. Please ensure that you check out the videos that I made before this one there is part 1, part 2, part 3 and so this is the fourth part current electricity by me your host Monday Dennis Seroma Christian High School physics teacher let's dive into episode 4 or part 4 this part actually handles basically the conversion of a galvanometer into an ammeter and also the conversion of a galvanometer into into a voltmeter so let's start with the conversion of a galvanometer into an ammeter now many times you'll find a galvanometer just they may call it a moving coil galvanometer they may call it a moving coil meter they may call it a milliameter they they, they always they can turn it around but just know that this meter can be converted into an ammeter to measure current or it can be converted into a voltmeter to measure voltage remember a galvanometer is very sensitive very sensitive that it cannot handle big currents it cannot uh, allow okay it can allow but it's so sensitive and so vulnerable that if a large current passes through it the coils will burn so not a lot of current can be allowed to pass through it but we are seeing how can we then adopt it how can we change it how can we uh, modify it so that it can measure current that's that's that, that's the conversion of the galvanometer into an ammeter so a moving coil instrument that would be galvanometer or a micro ammeter or sometimes called a milliameter is designed in a way that it can measure just a few milliampers of current a galvanometer or a micro ammeter can be converted into an ammeter by connecting a low resistance a low resistance resistor or a low resistance in a parallel with it so that resistor is called a shunt a shunt some if they ask you to define define a shunt as a resistor of very low resistance that is connected in parallel with a galvanometer in order to make an ammeter a shunt is a resistor of very low resistance connected in parallel with a galvanometer to make an ammeter so in this way it can measure larger currents that means the, the modified galvanometer which now becomes an ammeter when it is in parallel with a shunt it can measure large, larger currents in several amperes now i want you to mark this a bigger fraction or a bigger part of the current to be measured passes through the low resistance which we call the the shunt and then only and only <clears throat> a small known fraction passes through the meter or the galvanometer so I want you to bear in mind that the word shunt, the word shunt means to, to shunt is to divert attention. So the current that comes, as we shall see in the animation that will follow, the current that comes, most of it will pass through the shunt and just little, little will pass through the galvanometer. And always the amount that passes through the galvanometer is always what we call the full scale reading in most cases they call it the full scale deflection okay so we have here a galvanometer you may find here a symbol cap they may put a capital g or they may put um they may put here a capital g they may they may draw it like this like this and they put a capital g or you may find they may just draw it and they put an R. Still, it's a galvanometer. Now, this is a galvanometer. 
represented in this time. Um, <clears throat> here, we have a resistor of very low resistance, and this resistance is, is denoted by RS. This is what we call a shunt. Now, let's connect them in a parallel, <clears throat> just like that. So that if a current comes, I, if a current I, uh, this is the current to be measured, comes. So this current splits up. Just little current will pass through the ammeter, and then the rest of the current, largest portion, will go through the low resistance resistor here, which we call the RS, the shunt. The shunt. S-H-U-N-T, shunt. Now the currents, the currents that pass through the respective devices for the for the galvanometer we call it IG for the shunt we call it IS. Okay, the resistance of the galvanometer is RIG. Now, what you call an ammeter? What you call an ammeter? An ammeter is a, is actually. When you find an ammeter, it means they enclosed a shunt. They enclose a shunt together with a galvanometer. So like this. So you'll find a casing that has all the two enclosed. So the whole of this now forms what we call the ammeter. It has a galvanometer and a shunt connected in parallel. Just a few things to note before we proceed. We said a shunt has very low resistance. Therefore, when, <clears throat> when current comes at this junction, <clears throat> definitely it will flow to the side where the resistance is, eh, is lower. And just little current will flow through here because this, this resistance here has very low, this, this resistor has very low resistance. <clears throat> Sorry. Since the shunt and the galvanometer or the millimeter are in parallel, what did we talk about parallel connection? Remember, we said if if devices are in parallel, the PD across them has to be the same. So here we are saying that since the shunt and the galvanometer are in parallel, then the PD across the shunt is equal to the PD across the galvanometer. Now remember, PD from Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. <clears throat> that means that the PD across the shunt will be the current through the shunt times the resistance of the shunt. And similarly, the, the PD across the galvanometer will, will be current through the galvanometer times the resistance of the galvanometer. Remember, remember, remember. Many times, IG, the current through the galvanometer, is just given as the full scale deflection, the maximum current that that galvanometer or the millimeter can take in. Remember, from this junction here, this junction here, if this current comes and splits up, it means that I is equal to IS plus IG. And it's the reason why we are writing that IS is equal to I minus IG. Please note that. Okay, let's look at examples. Find the shunt, find the shunt resistance required to convert a 5 ohm 15, 15 milliampere milliameter milliameter into an ammeter to measure currents up to 1.5 amperes. Now look at this. This is a milliameter or galvanometer whose maximum full scale deflection is 15 milliampere. And its resistance is five ohms. So how can you, how can you adopt it? How can you uh, adjust it, or how can you modify it to measure a current up to 1.5 amperes? So this is what we're going to do: is 1.5. So this is 1.5 amperes. I hope that is clear. 1.5 amperes. That is our I. Then we are told you that the resistance of the galvanometer is 5 ohms. 5 ohms. Um, IG, this one here, IG, which is the, the full scale deflection, IG is equal to 15 milliampere. 
So IG, this IG here, you're going to write, it's 15 milliampers. Now milli, this can be written as 15 milli means divide by a thousand amperes, which is going to give you definitely 0 0.015 amperes. Okay. <clears throat> what are we left with? To do the calculation, what are we supposed to know? Now we know RG, we know IG, we are left with IS. So how do you get IS? Remember I is equal to IG plus IS. That means IS is going to be the I that comes, which is 1.5 amperes minus IG, IG which is 0. 0.015 amperes. Okay, sorry, sorry um, for the disorganization here, but I hope you're following. Now, let's use our formula. So we are saying that <coughs> since, since uh, the PD across the galvanometer is equal to the PD across the shunt. It means that IG RG this is a G a G okay should be equal to IS IS R R S. What is IG? IG is equal to zero point zero one five times what is RIG, we have 5, should be equal to, what is IS, we have, IS, actually if you subtract 1.5 minus 0 0.015, you get 1.485 amperes, as, as your 1 is. So you're going to have 1.485. Then times RIS. And so you'll use this expression here and get RS equals to, uh, you have 0. Point, you have 0. 0.015 times 5, then you're dividing by 1.1485. And <clears throat> the calculator gives me 0. 0.065. Three zero continuing. So let me just write that. So realize that the resistance of this shunt is going to be zero point zero six five three ohms. That's a very very small resistance. Please, I want to request you um, that you 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 go backward. Just play back this video without the writings that I've made here and then try to do this calculation on your own. Okay. Number two, a moving coil galvanometer of resistance 20 ohms gives a maximum deflection when a current of five milliampers is passed through it. How can it be converted into an ammeter which can carry a current of five amperes? So, once again, we have such an arrangement Let's just summarize. I'm going to summarize and I'll leave this for you. A moving coil galvanometer of resistance. So we have RG. We have RG. The RG is 20 ohms. And the maximum scale deflection, the maximum deflection is 5 milliampers. So that means our IG is equal to 5 milliampers. That 5 millimeters divided by 1000 amperes, which you can write as IG. IG is equal to 0 0.005 amperes. Okay. Um, how can it be converted into an ammeter which can carry a current of 5 amperes? So the current they want us to measure is that of 5 amperes. So what are you supposed to do? First get IS. IS is equal to I minus IG. Which is going to be what is our I? 
our i is 5 amperes minus ig which is 0 0.005 amperes and what does your calculator give you please in your calculations don't always do calculations on the diagram we just try to uh, to do this so that you can see 5 minus 0 0.005 Five, so we have four point nine nine five amperes. Okay. So how can it be? Question. The question was how can it be converted into an ammeter which can carry current of five amperes? That means that you have to know that for it to be converted into an ammeter, we must get the resistance of the shunt. So remember, for, a sh for, for, for conversion of a galvanometer into an ammeter, our formula is IS, RS, RS, S, come on, is equal to IG, RG. Okay. So what is our IS? Our IS is 4.995 times rs should be equal to what is ig ig is 0 0.005 times what is rg 20 so you'll get your use this form use this uh, equation here and get the value of of rs by getting 0 0.005 times 20 over 4 0.995 this is a 5 I don't have a stylus that's why my things are disorganized I'm just using my hand ok so what does the calculator give you if you press For me here, when I calculate, I'm ending up with, I'm ending up with 0 0.02. Yeah, so I get RS as 0 0.02 ohms. 0 0.02 ohms. Please still do the same thing. Uh, play back. Just, just pause this and then rewind it. With before my ratings and then try to redo and see whether you also end up with the same answer Okay, number three a moving coil instrument of resistance 5 ohms measures Maximum current of 50 milliampers. How can it be adopted to measure a maximum current of 5 amperes? By the way number for number two we didn't answer the question we didn't answer the question. The question was, how can it be converted into an ammeter which can carry a current of 5 amperes? Here we hadn't finished. We are supposed to say, the, the right answer is by connecting a low resistance, resist, or you can just say a shunt of 0 0.02 amperes in a parallel with the galvanometer. So all you had to do was calculate the resistance of that shunt, and then you put it in words. Okay. A moving coil instrument of resistance 5 ohms measures a maximum current of 50 milliampers. How can it be adopted to measure a maximum current of 5 amperes? These are your questions. Question number four, you can read through. You pause, read through, and do it. Number five, also yours. And even number six. Pause these questions, do them, and please feel free to send me the replies on my WhatsApp number. I'll put it at the end of this video. Conversion of a galvanometer into a voltmeter. So remember, a galvanometer or a milliameter. For it, it cannot be used to measure uh, large voltages, but how can you Adopt it. How can you modify it to measure large voltages? So we connect with it in series a resistor of very high resistance, which has a special name. It's called a multiplier. So this is our galvanometer or the milliameter 
or the moving coil meter. It has resistance RIG. Now we connect a resistance of very high resistance or resistor of very high resistance called a multiplier in series with it. And so I uh, shall have current that will pass through both of them because they are in series. And the current, the reason why we're calling, we're calling it IG is because the current that goes through the galvanometer, which is a full scale deflection, is the same as the current that goes through this multiplier. So that's why we're indicating IG and IG because they are in series. In series, devices always have the same current passing through them. So the PD across the multiplier is called VM and the PD across the galvanometer is called VG. Now, what you call a voltmeter is just a composition of the two put together. So I've indicated using some circle but it's dotted or it's a broken circle. Now the, the two, the two here, this circle here indicates that the two are making what we call the galvano, the, the voltmeter. So when you see a voltmeter, it has two voltages. It is a sum of two voltages. It measures two voltages. There is the RM, the, 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 the sorry, there is the VM, which is the voltage across or the PD across the multiplier, and there is the PD across the galvanometer. Now remember, in this case, the same current will flow through. Why? Because they are in series. That means the same current flows through both of them since they are in series. Okay. So examples. Let's look at one example. I think it will be enough. A galvanometer of resistance 10 ohms and full scale deflection 50 milliampers is used as a voltmeter to read up to 15 volts. How, how would this be achieved? How can you achieve that? Definitely, remember, for it to be to measure such a big voltage, you must use what we call a multiplier. Connect a very high resistance with the galvanometer in series. Now, the question is how would this be achieved? So in simple terms, you have to calculate the resistance of the multiplier. Now remember, remember that from our formula, we know that the, the two are giving us, the, the two are making now the, the voltmeter, the voltmeter. And the voltmeter, is reading up to 15 volts. So the required voltage should be equal to voltage across the galvanometer plus voltage across the multiplier. So that means that 15, 15 should be equal to what's the voltage across the, the PD across the galvanometer. So you get the current the current, do we know the current, which is IG, IG, that's the full scale deflection. Remember, remember, remember that if you have IG, your IG is 50 milliampers, which is the same as milli, this milli, milli means what? Milli means times 10 power negative 3. So you'll have, you'll have 0 0.05 Ampires. That means we shall have a V is equal to, now this is IG RG plus IG RM. We still maintain the IG because it's the same current that flows through. I've already illustrated that. Please, this M here got rubbed just yes, because I was trying to emphasize. Now, Let's substitute, we shall have 15 should give us what is IG, the current through the galvanometer, which is 0 0.0505 times what is RG, resistance of the galvanometer, that's 10. Then plus what is IG, 0 0.0505 times what is RM, RM is what we are looking for. Yeah. 
So you can therefore get here um, that your this is 15 should be equal to 0 0.5 plus 0 0.05 R. Yeah, please proceed and get the value of R. I'm getting 290 ohms. 290. Please compare with my answer. And probably um, I may also make a mistake. I'm a human being. So please compare. Now, the question was one more time. They said, How would this be achieved? So you explain and say, or you talk about it because you've calculated the resistance of the, of the milliameter. You say, this is achieved by connecting by connecting a multi a multiplier multiplier of resistance 290 ohms or a resistance of 290 ohms in series with a galvanometer okay now a voltage to be measured remember uh, I've just explained this. V is equal to Vm plus C, Vg. And the same current, Ig, flows through both the multiplier and the galvanometer. Thus, the voltage to be measured is obtained from that equation. I've just used that. More questions. These are for you. Distinguish between a shunt and a multiplier. Part B. Convert a 5 ohms, 10 milliampere milliampere milliameter into a voltmeter to measure voltage up to 5 amperes. Number 2 can pause and do it also. Number 3 right there. And it has two parts. Thank you so very much for for watching, for listening, for doing the exercises. May God bless you. Heads but no tails for good in my country. Bye-bye.